some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. A necropsy on an Akita breed dog that attacked someone, bit their leg severely, and was displaying neurological symptoms. So as you can see, the first thing we do is we make a central incision in the middle of the skull, uh, the specimen, to cut the skin and expose the muscle. Um, this is to help uh, get all the hair away from the area we'll be working with because hair is not good in terms of DFA testing. The conjugate is absorbed by the hair and uh, that's not good. And it can obstruct your view uh, when you're performing microscopy. So here I am cutting the muscle. I try to cut as close to the bone as possible. Some of these breeds have a lot of muscle. The bigger dogs have a lot of muscle, like German Shepherds, Pit Bulls, stuff like that. Sometimes we have to go through one or two scalpels because the blade will dull from cutting so much muscle. But I, I tend to cut as close to the crown of the skull as possible because that's the easiest and the less, or the least amount of work you have to do when cutting muscle. You also need to make sure that the muscle is off the skull because the bone saw will only really work well if it makes contact with the bone and not muscle. So here I am doing the other side. Also, one thing to note is that the way you perform necropsy doesn't necessarily matter. Um, everyone does it a tad differently. As long as you get to the pieces that you need and those pieces are intact and viable for testing, um, then you should be fine. So here I am, I have the skull basically exposed to the point where I can do the cut. Um, I like the smaller bone saw, it's easier to manipulate, and um, I just prefer it. We have another one that's bigger, with uh, bigger blades. So I make the top cut, which is the initial cut that you should make, then I make the side cuts. You may be asking, oh, well, aren't you cutting the brain? And yeah, I actually am cutting the brain. Um, but it honestly doesn't really matter because we don't use the front part or the middle, and the cut that I make in the back is actually the type of cross-section we want um, for the cerebellum. Um, so the cutting is negligible when thinking about um, the type of cross-section you want, especially when it comes to uh, the back part. Some people do three cuts, I do four. For me, it's easiest. So with this dog, it's pretty, pretty thick skull, so I have to use the bone crusher. That's the bone crusher right there. It's basically a piece of metal that's to a point and you can just twist it and break it open. Now what you see there, if you notice on the skull cap, that little kind of cup of bone, that is typically the bone or the cartilage that is housing the cerebellum. And on cats it's really hard to get to. So that's why I make that back cut is because it usually comes off with the skull cap. And usually the dura matter, which is the that kind of film that you see there usually comes off with a skull cap, but for the specimen it didn't. Um, it's very annoying to work with because it holds the brain in place. I mean, it's good for, you know, living people, but for necropsy it's, it's hard to, uh, as you can see, I have to make a lot more cuts and I actually destroy the front brain a little more because I'm trying to keep the integrity of the cerebellum which is hard when you have the dura matter on there because when you take it out, it will kind of um, rip it apart. So I try to cut the dura matter so that it doesn't mess with the cerebellum, but it does sacrifice the front brain, as you can see. This part is kind of nasty, but you get over it after a while. So here I am being very careful, trying to cut around uh, sever the brain stem from the rest of the brain stem that goes in uh, through the form magnum out the bottom of the head that you can't see right now. We want to sever that because if you try taking out the cerebellum with that still on, um, it could compromise the integrity of the cerebellum. So here I am making an incision to cut that the brain stem that's going into the back of the skull so that I can take out the cerebellum with the partial brain stem that's with it and then in this case, I can make one cut down the middle and I'll have 
the cross section of the cerebellum as well as the brainstem. And you'll see that in a minute. Yeah. So here, this is probably the most important part is making an accurate cross section. Notice that I am getting all three parts of the cerebellum, the left, the right hemisphere, and the middle part. I try to make sure that that's as accurate as possible. I'm cutting all the way down also so that I can get the cross section of the brain stem. Um, and then I usually pick the, the portion that I think looks best for uh, impressions. And in this case, it's the one on the tongue depressor. Beautiful. And now, since it's a small brain in comparison to like a horse or something, I only use two, oh my gosh, look at all the hair. I only use two slides for the um, cerebellum impressions. It'll get typically a whole side or a whole hemisphere and then a little and about half of the central part. So, and there's the other side. And then here's me getting the stem. And notice that the stem is cut already with the cerebellum.